back at the ATV in the burn. I was able to move a few things around so I actually have a little bit of worm to work. And I was able to back it in. So, the oil's changed and the oil filter. That was not that hard. Uh, first time I've changed the oil on something in a long time myself. So, it was kind of a fun experience. That blue female clip I had to replace and I also got some temperature sensitive sh shrink wrap so I sealed it up really good it was kind of getting frayed and whoever put it together kind of just did a quick job of it and that should be a little bit more waterproof all right so back to the hub all right so I got the rear wheel off and this is what it looks like you had a big honking hub right there fortunately you got a big honking 30 millimeter socket and a half inch L bar now I'll tell you I didn't have those and I got lucky Canadian Tire had a sale so there is the rear wheel hub that's got to come off to get to the brakes and I'm expecting to find a small shark in there probably and dump out some water all right so the first job is to get that friggin cotter pin out fortunately I was smart enough to buy a few cotter pins when I was at the at the hardware store so I'm gonna take that off and try to get this thing opened up see if we can find some goldfish and there it the seal broke oh. well whoever had that on before did not over torque it I thought was going to be the case like every good mechanic I have all the proper tools seeing how uh, for some reason I don't have a quarter inch ratchet set well I have all the heads I just don't happen to have a quarter inch rack. My Allen key set, the largest one, seems to do a really fine job. That's an 8mm. And that corresponds with the little screws as such. Well, we've hidden in pads. The drum is just... I thought it was going to be wet, and I thought there were going to be fish swimming around inside of here, but it was the exact opposite sealed up, it was dry as a bone, which is a little surprising, but this thing is on tight, and getting it loose from the axle is proving difficult. Um, anyway, I'm going to hit it up with some penetrating oil, and see if I can get that out. Put it a few times with the mallet. I hit it with a few times with the mallet, we'll see. Seems like it's loosened up a touch. So that's the actuator, and it moves on a handle-like unit that I have taken off and cleaned. Now I could take all the springs and etc. off and tap that in, and that might put a little pressure on the drum. But that's the last thing I want to do. I'm going to see if I can just pull the drum off now. Like I said, it's been soaking all night with lots of WD-40 and lots of other penetrating oil. So let's give her a crack. So that drum is seized pretty tight to that axle. I let it sit overnight in penetrating oil, so we'll see if we can get it off. It seems like it's moving a little bit now. Um, I was using my high-tech mallet, a piece of soft 2x4, uh, just giving it taps and stuff like that because my rubber mallet is missing. So we're still trying to get the drum off of the ATV. It's just a frozen solid bugger. We are going to try a few things tonight. Well, the first thing we're trying tonight is a propane heater because it is cold. The other thing we're going to try is I got a new dead blow because I couldn't find mine. A nice, good sized east wing. So, time to start hammering. So, here we are again, still trying to get this drum off. I put the uh, I put the wheel on back yesterday and tried driving it around, seeing if I could just jar it loose with a little bit of light drive, and that didn't seem to help. So what I've done here is 
I stripped it back down and on the other side. I've removed the wheel and the and the hub, etc. I the axle goes through and through. So I have to remove the four bolts from here that are on the differential. And then I have to remove the four bolts that are on the back of the brake. And then the axle should slide through, but I believe there is an O-ring in here I have to account for. And a little bit of light banging with the rubber mallet. Well, I finally got the uh, axle off, or the uh, axle cover off. Uh, a little bit of surface rust, but I think that'll brush off just fine. The axle seems pretty good, so um, I'll have to get some sealant, clean up everything, clean up the bearings, whack her up full of grease. But the big thing is for me to get that last bolt off of the brake drum holder for the brake casing so I can pull the bearing or pull the uh, pardon me the axle through so getting closer one more screw to go by the way 14 millimeters for these ones here and there is a 12 millimeter screw that need or 12 millimeter bolt that needs to be removed from the skid plate that goes under the rear differential ladies and gentlemen I'd like to present to you the axle out of a 350 rancher. So we had to take the axle cover off of here. It can stay on there. Of course removing the brake assembly uh, with those four bolts there and the axle assembly with those four bolts there and this little mother I don't know if the camera's getting to it properly. Yeah, you can just see it. It's the one that is uh, lined up with the floor. It is a bugger. The 12 millimeter bugger, 14 millimeter bugger, and then four more 14 millimeter buggers right here. But that way, that's all loose. I can get this inside and see why this gosh darn drum won't come off in properly heated conditions instead of relying on that heater there and my propane anyway this needs a good brushing anyway the lines all look pretty good we finally got the brake drum off we had to remove the axle from the ATV itself which was quite fun uh, everything is really easy to do on a clean machine that's brand new that's been well serviced it's a heck of a lot harder on a machine that's muddy, rusty, and parts haven't been taken apart in a while. So anyway, I had to use the brake puller, and I actually had to connect it to the brake, um, whatchamacallit here, the brake housing. And what I tried to do is hold it in around the nut holes. I tried to hold it in around these areas because they're reinforced and there's more material. That's aluminum and I didn't want it to bend pulling this thing off. Anyway, the spindles are there. You can see the different, different color, but everything's cool with it. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. The bearings are in good shape. It's just dirty from all the penetrating oil I've been shooting into it. So I'm going to pull the brake pads off, clean this thing out in my gross bucket. And the best part about this is it's all done inside. So the next part of the video, or the next video, pardon me, I guess I can put the new brake pads in and get this reassembled back in the barn. Uh, we have a severe wind chill warning coming up for the next couple of days, so I'll be glad to be able to do some work inside. Thanks for the interest, and thanks for watching.